Now, here's something to ponder. And once I tell you what it is, you may say, well, you should have seen this all along. And you're probably right. So I'm kind of embarrassed that I didn't see this all along. I kind of intuited that I, 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 this was an idea, but it finally struck me. Of all things, I walked into a beer brewing store. I was looking for some, uh, some fermenting supplies. That's a good place to go, by the way, for vats, for uh, release valves, for your, the tops on your fermenting vessels, and, other, and even some bacteria. They sell bacteria, of course, that are meant to ferment wine and beer and other foods. So they'll have species like the fungus Saccharomyces cerevisiae, or lactobacillus brevis, one that's used to change the flavor of beers and ales. So I was talking to the sales staff, and they said, so what are you fermenting? And I said, it struck me then, human microbes. They were horrified. They said, oh, what? <laughs> You're fermenting human microbes? So despite uh, many years these people were engaged in fermenting things, it was a completely foreign idea to them that you could take microbes sourced from humans and ferment them. Of course, that's what we do. When we ferment such species as Lactobacillus rotari for all its wonderful effects, Lactobacillus gasseri because it colonized the small intestine and is terrific for producing bacteriocins, Lactobacillus crispatus, and other species, we do it for specific benefit. Now, this probably wouldn't have worked a hundred years ago because back then, People had all the microbes they needed, barring exposure to some bad things. You know, our exposure is mostly antibiotics, glyphosate, and things like that. Uh, a century ago, it might have been to lead or mercury or things like that. So putting that aside, uh, maybe 100 years is not enough. Maybe go back 1,000 years or something like that. And we had people who had something closer to the uh, ancestral microbiome than what we have today, this thinned out desert of a microbiome. So that's why this works in today's day and age where we get human microbes. So Lactobacillus rotari, for instance, was sourced in the 1990s from the breast milk of a woman living in the highlands of Peru. And a scientist did that because he had a hard time finding it in modern Western populations. He had to go to populations that were isolated and relatively primitive and unexposed to antibiotics. Likewise, numerous other species that had largely been lost from humans. So if we want to get, if we want to harvest, say, more interesting microbes, we might have to go to Africa or the jungles of South America. Now, just because they have species, though, doesn't mean we need them also. Maybe some aspects of our microbiome are adaptations to the quirks of modern life. So this is, is an evolving concept. But know that what we are doing here is fermenting human microbes. We're not fermenting beer microbes or wine microbes, but human microbes. Now, the limitation in all this is that we can't ferment, not, at least not yet, all human microbes. So we know that the species I mentioned have spectacular, wonderful effects. We also know that there are species in the human gastrointestinal and other microbiomes. So, uh, incidentally, the mouth has a microbiome. The skin has a microbiome, and different locations of skin have different microbiomes. The scalp is different from the armpit, it's different from the arm, it's different from the groin, it's different from the, from the uh, soles of the feet. There's also a vaginal microbiome. Shockingly, there's a urinary microbiome, a prostate microbiome, a uterus microbiome, an airway microbiome. In other words, every location in the human body has its own unique microbiome, much of which has been distorted. And so that's a whole other conversation, of course. But there are microbes we'd like to have at higher numbers, but we can't ferment them because they're not fermentable given current methods. They may be in future as fermenting methods get better. So for instance, a really cool microbe is Fecalobacterium prosnitzii because it's the major producer of butyric acid in the gastrointestinal tract. And when you produce lots of butyric acid, it heals the intestinal lining, so it helps you in conditions like irritable bowel syndrome, also colitis and Crohn's disease. It helps, it, gets, it enters the bloodstream and mediates all kinds of positive effects like better mood, better sleep, more vivid, restorative sleep and dreams, uh, reduction in blood sugar, reduction in blood pressure, reduction in fatty liver and triglycerides. So getting more fecalobacterium by fermenting it is not currently possible because that's an example of an obligate anaerobe, that is, a microbe that dies upon exposure 
to air, to oxygen. And there are many other species like that. A partial solution may be for what's been done with acromancia that's coated with something to protect it. But even that is very imperfect. It allows you only small numbers of, of microbes. So it's a work in progress. And in the meantime, but just because we can't ferment something can't doesn't mean we can't take advantage of it. So with the uh, example of Fecalibacterium, if you get fit fibers, especially inulin and the related fructooligosaccharides, FOS, and hyaluronic acid, that is one of the few fibers sourced from animals that most don't want to eat brain and skin anymore or tongue, so we get it as a, as a powder supplement. Um, and other fibers like galacto-oligosaccharides from legumes like black beans, white beans, chickpeas, hummus, etc. Those are the things that we can consume to bloom Fecalibacterium. Now, is there additional advantage in, in when the time comes to ferment Fecalibacterium at higher enough? Maybe. We don't know. No one's ever done it. So it'd be uncharted territory. But it is a, an emerging science insights that we've never had before that are occurring because of what we've done to damage the human microbiome. Stay tuned as this science evolves and we get better and better at restoring human microbes to the gastrointestinal and other microbiomes around the body.